All right, all right, all right. Day two, day two. We're going to take day two stuff. We're going to start taking what we learned yesterday and start expanding that and doing some more things around our body. So, uh, yeah, quick review. Yesterday we worked on our narrow dribbles. It's basically our home base, not fully extended, not super close to us, right, right in the middle. And we were able to take that, rotate the stick to be able to get our stick handles, and then extend it wide and extend out with the arms, all right? And then linking it all together so we make it a nice dynamic movement. Now, now that we got that, what we're going to work on is we're going to work on being able to take that ball or puck and being able to work it around your body. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take those narrow dribbles that we did to start with, and we're going to start moving. So what I mean by that is we're going to start moving with your upper body. So instead of your hands moving around and it coming here with your body being static, which you can do and we will do, the first one I want you to get really good at first is being able to make your narrow dribbles and then rotate your shoulders. Bend your knees as you need, because you are going to have to skate like this, right? You are going to have to skate nice and low. So bend those knees, let that ball come around, right? And as you get better and better with this, it's good to be able to rotate. And you can even, you know, keep your head up, try to look at the same spot. Again, as you get more and more comfortable with this kind of thing, you can speed it up. Um, make sure that you're not looking down the whole time as you're doing it. Try to keep your head up. Uh, with all of these exercises, you can do this with your head up as a, an explicit extra thing to make sure you're doing. Um, so that is called the windshield wiper, right? This is our windshield wiper. Um, and uh, good, we got it, right? So now that you've got the windshield wiper down, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to work on being able to take that, that puck from, again, our home base, which is our central place. We can extend out anywhere. This is our centered spot, right? We're going to take that home base and we're going to get comfortable with, as we're playing, we're going to get into situations where we want to bring it onto our forehand side really quick. So to be able to do that, you want to be able to quickly be able to pull it across. So going from here, quickly being able to get it to that forehand side. So being able to pull it, usually some kind of diagonal back, whether that be pulling it uh, just wide across here, fine. Pull it a little bit further back. So kind of if it's like a clock, being able to get good at everything from three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock. Oh, that was a little off. It was like 4.30. Five o'clock, uh, five o'clock, yeah. Um, and uh, and well, six o'clock is like three of your legs, eh? Uh, again, try to get like even 5.30 just to give yourself just to give yourself some more range of motion. You want to be able to hit any of these spots at a moment's notice. So that's a pull to your forehand, a diagonal pull. Same thing wants to happen on your backhand side, being able to pull to your backhand side at a moment's notice, being able to bring it right back to center. So practicing, you can practice it any way that you like, but just throwing in those diagonal moves is a good way to be able to, uh, again, give yourself some more options and some more freedom as you're Moving around. All right, now that we've gotten our diagonal cuts, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna work on being able to take that diagonal cut, and so you're gonna be on your forehand. I want you to work forward and backward from your forehand. So everything from that initial, just narrow dribble to extending that out, you can rotate to allow that extension to happen. A lot of your moves get based on this kind of thing. If you watch a lot of the NHL, or especially as they come in for shots, for penalty shots and things, they may take a quick push and they'll hold, they'll freeze the goalie by being able to be here and they'll throw in those little extra pushes, which again, for them, you can get a lot of range. So if I just do my, my lean with my body and my, my shoulder turn, I can get a fair amount of movement just in this short movement. For me, I'm just really, with my arms, I'm just doing this. I'm just turning my stick over. Everything else is happening because of my body movement, right? So if I can get good at my body movement, giving me something that looks like a shot. So if it looks like I'm gonna shoot at you, 
then it's going to freeze the goalie. It's look, they're going to have to go with it. But I've got complete control of the, of the puck, right? So that gives me the advantage. I've got a nice, complete control of the puck. From there, I can do whatever silliness I want to do to, to rip on the goalie. But again, main thing is to get comfortable and good at being on that forehand side, being able to, to get comfortable using your body to move it. And then you can also extend just with your arms. Like it's good to be able to do that too. So you can make that kind of push with just your arms, but know that the most effective maneuvers when you're trying to fake somebody out is a maneuver that looks like your body's going to do something. So if you try to fake somebody out just by moving your arms, it's not as believable as somebody who's trying to fake you out by moving their body. And that's gonna give you a lot more freedom as you're uh, trying to get somebody to think you're gonna do one thing when you know you're gonna do something else. All right, same thing on that backhand side. So getting comfortable at being able to practice that shoulder turn to give you that extra kind of push and you can work on those, just getting your shoulders connected with everything. And then as you do that, getting your legs a little more involved, being able to explode through your hips and you're, you're using your big muscles, right? And, uh, and then again, you can do that just with the arms, but just know that most of your most effective kind of shots, or not shots, moves are gonna be faking using those legs, using your core, and that's the, the most effective way to be able to fake somebody out thinking that you're gonna be doing one thing when you wanna do something else. Good. We got it. Hopefully I'm not too much of a broken record. There's day two. Thank you. I'll see you on day three.